In this video, I want to talk all things muscle knots and trigger points. What actually are muscle knots or trigger points? What causes them and what does the science tell us we should be doing so that you can get rid of these painful parts of your body? So let's go. Thanks for checking out the channel. My name's John. I'm head therapist, sports injury therapist at John W Sports Injury. Here we want to be doing three simple things. We want to help you understand your body so you can get rid of pain or weakness and strive forward to hit your health and well-being exercise goals. So speaking of understanding your body, let's talk about muscle knots. I'm sure we've all had them, but what are these muscle knots or these painful parts in our body? Well, they can be defined as an area of muscle and where the fibers have become in a shortened, contracted state. So what are causing these? Well, what we do know is that the research is constantly evolving on this. There's multiple theories that come out around muscle knots and trigger points, but ultimately many things can be a factor and the cause of muscle knots might vary from person to person. But let's talk through some of the key ways that might be causing some muscle knots so you can know how to prevent them. Firstly, we know that overusing a particular muscle might lend itself to the development of muscle, of muscle knots. So for example, if I wanted to re repeat multiple um, bicep curls, we know that the chances of my bicep ending up developing trigger points, areas of the muscle fiber that stay in this short and contracting state, is going to increase. So we also know that if a muscle has a lack of flexibility, so again, if my muscle doesn't have much flexibility to take me through that range, but I keep doing multiple repetitions of this, it's gonna already be in a shortened state, so the chances of developing these muscle knots are going to increase. We also know that direct blunt force or trauma could lead itself to a trigger point development. So if I was to take a blow into my bicep, that might actually increase the chances of trigger point, trigger point formation happening in that area. We also know that muscular imbalances are something that can lead themselves to development of these muscle knots. So for my elbow to go through that movement, I need my biceps and triceps to work together, what we call an antagonistic pair. We want those muscles to work in harmony, whereas one contracts, the other one relaxes, allowing that movement to happen. But if one muscle is particularly good and its partner in crime isn't so good, what can happen is that can lend itself to forming some trigger points as a result of that dysfunction through that muscular imbalance. Finally, we could be talking some postural imbalances might be leading to trigger point formation. So if we think of somebody working at a desk, they might sit with their shoulders elevated without realizing it with their hands on the keyboard. What happens there is that we spend more time or extended periods of time with these muscles in our neck, shoulder areas in a shortened state, that might lend itself to the development of trigger point formation. Or working at a desk, we might have rounded shoulders, our shoulders forward as we type on a keyboard. That leads these muscles to be in a shortened state rather than a relaxed state, leading themselves to be more likely to develop these trigger points. And alongside this postural imbalances is that we also need to think that trigger points can come about as a, an emotional response. So by that I mean that when if we're suffering times of stress, anxiety, um, anger, we often go into this shoulder elevated position, what I can often call our body defense. So it's an emotional response, but the problem with that is we then leave these muscles in here again in this shortened state. What does that lend itself to? Well, it lends itself to increases our chances of developing trigger points in the area. So how do we identify trigger points? Well, what we know about these trigger points is they tend to be tender to the touch. So if we're feeling pain in an area and we push into that area and we feel soreness in that area, the likelihood that that being a trigger point in the area or an active trigger point is quite high. Now we need to remember that we will have these muscle knots all over our body. This naturally comes about with everyday life, but they might be termed latent trigger points, ones that aren't particularly active or painful or symptomatic. But over time, some of these trigger points can lend themselves to becoming more active, more painful, more uh, symptomatic. And these are what we would call active trigger points. And these are the ones that when we push on, they may either cause pain in a particular area, in a localized area. So if I feel pain in my shoulder and I push on that area and it hurts, then that might lend itself to being an active trigger point. Or they might also refer. So I might be suffering with a headache or pain in the back of my head. And I realize that when I push into this trigger point, it creates that pain running right the way up to my head. Very common referral pattern there. Um, and again, leads itself to being very indicative of a trigger point happening in that area. So 
if we've got these trigger points or we don't want to get these trigger points in the first place, what do we need to do about it? Well, there is a form of treatment that we term trigger point therapy. So that's probably a good place to start. So firstly, what is trigger point therapy? Well, trigger point therapy is when we look to apply some pressure to a sore point of the muscle. So I mentioned if I had a trigger point developed in my shoulder and I felt that to be painful, if I apply pressure to that, after about 30 seconds to a minute, perhaps even longer for a particularly active trigger point, we might start to get that relaxation effect. Feel those tight muscle fibers relaxing and the symptoms or the pain starts to drop. So why does this trigger point therapy work? Well, again, the science tells us a couple of reasons why we might be helping ourselves out. Firstly, as I mentioned, trigger points may cause a constriction of blood flow. By pushing on a sore trigger point, what we're doing is further constricting that blood flow. Why is this helpful? Well, the key bit comes next. When we release that area, what the body does is respond to that constricted blood flow by sending more blood to that area. And what we're trying to create is this flushing effect, if you like, this flushing of waste products so that we can get rid of those trigger points in that area. Secondly, it's believed that trigger point therapy can be helpful by creating a neurological response. What do I mean by this? Well, it's trying to send a message to our brain. If we push on an area of soreness, our pain receptors in our body and those muscle fibers get activated and they communicate to the brain. How does the brain respond? Once it detects pain in the area, the message comes back that we need to relax those muscle fibers. So by pushing on the area, we're listing that response so that when we get the message back, it creates a relaxation effect in that area. So that's why trigger point therapy can be really helpful. And that works quite nicely alongside some other self-massage techniques. So things like um, using a trigger point ball to apply that pressure into the area or a foam roller to roll through these tight areas of tissue can be helpful in loosening out those short, tight muscle fibers. So another thing that might be helpful in terms of a home remedy is something like heat in the area. Why does heat help in the area? Well, we mentioned that trigger points may be um, have a restricted blood supply and we want to enhance that blood supply to the area to get rid of those waste products. So by heating the area, what we're doing is we're telling our body to send more blood to the area. The body will respond in that way and you can be supporting that inflammatory response and enhancing it to hopefully relax those muscle fibers. But really, this trigger point therapy, self-massage therapy and heating can be really helpful. They can be reducing the pain. But ultimately, what you want to be doing is making sure that they're gone long term. How do you do this? Well, you need to find the cause. As with any injury, we want to identify the root cause so that it goes long term and can be corrected. So if you're getting pain that's lasting more than about 72 hours, I would always recommend that you seek some professional help, somebody that can identify the true causes of your trigger points. They can look at things like the muscular imbalances. They can look at the postural imbalances. They can understand understand if there's any emotional responses that might be happening and they can advise you accordingly on getting rid of these trigger points. But I hope that that video has been helpful for you. If it has, you can do me a favour, show me that you've been this far in the video, show me that it's been helpful by smashing that thumbs up button because I greatly appreciate that and I look at that in terms of identifying what future content I should be making. And speaking of future content, if you want to find out as soon as I drop a new video, make sure you subscribe hit that bell notification because then we will be letting you know as soon as our next video drops. And speaking of further videos, here's another one to help you on your way with your health and wellbeing journey. I'll see you in the next video.